Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Baswala Ninotate. Goeiemorgen. I greet you all in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. I, I can can everybody hear me? Yes, we can, Pastor. Yeah, I, I just want to apologize for the location where I am. You know, the devil was also preparing for this sermon this morning. Last night I was rehearsing and rehearsing and everything went very good. And this morning when I logged in, I couldn't log in. I was struggling. I was changing laptops and phones and things about, but nothing happened. I could just not log in. Eventually, on the last minute, uh, Bishop Eugene called me. He said, uh, uh, "Send me a message." He said, "Where are you? Are you? Uh, uh, can you log in?" I said, "Bishop, now I must to just rest, uh, rush to a parking lot or so, so that I can see if I cannot log in." Hallelujah. So yes, yeah, I'm sitting here in a parking lot. And I am so ready for the word. As you are ready for the word, I am also. Let me just tell you this one. You know, Jesus, the temple in Jerusalem was built by his great, great father, Solomon. And then he goes to the temple and the floors was plated with gold. The walls was plated by gold. But they now making his father's house a house of them they are selling and things and he throw everything out of the temple and then they put him out of the church they say you can't do something like that they put him out of his own church jesus went in the mountains and preached he preached under the tree he preached in the parking lot that like i'm now in the parking lot and then even those pharisees those priests they follow him to where he was. They leave this beautiful temple plated with gold. And they follow him in the mountains and under the trees where he was preaching. And this is exactly what the devil is doing. He's going to follow, 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 follow you wherever God is set you up for greatness. And one day, Jesus was on the side of the mountain. And he looked down to the temple. That his great great father Solomon was building. And he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, your house used to be my house, but now my house is your house. Ladies and gentlemen, it does not matter the location where are you coming from. It's when it is when now let me just go this way. So now the disciples ask him, Yeah, but master, what are you saying now? There is the temple. This is where we are going. This is where there is. He said, No, that is not the case. He said, On this rock, this is the church. On this rock, not Peter, on this rock. The rock of the gospel, the rock of the truth. On this rock I shall build my house. Not in the temple was plated gold walls and floors, but on this rock I will build my house. The rock of humility, the rock of, 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 of love, the rock of joy, peace. On this rock. I will build my church, not the one in Jerusalem that is standing there. That was just something that I put in here. This is not part of my scripture. It's just because I want to justify uh, my location. <laughs> now, this morning, we're going to talk about something that is so evident in our daily lives. It's not affecting only the world out there, but it is also in the church and i think the message this morning is so relevant to anybody that feel that you know i need a little bit adjustment i need to come back to where god want me if jesus can preach on the, on the mountain if he can walk with sandals if his limousine was a donkey if he was his clothes was just a rope pride it's going to kill us. Pride is going to kill our spirit. 
Come let us pray. Heavenly Father, speak to us one more time. Your word said, you shall bring light and understanding even to the simple. Father, right now, I remove any resistance. I remove any buying and selling in the hearts of your people. Satan, if you follow us this morning here, back off right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare this meeting open. And I invite all heaven beings, angels, come and sit with us. Right here next to me in the left hand seat is the angel. Right at the back of me is the angels of the Lord. They come to protect me. They come to protect you. And I pray right now, Jesus, that you shall speak in the heart of your people. You shall edify them this morning. Any resistance, you will break it down. I pray this morning for the broken heart that they will be healed. Those who are mourning in Zion, I pray, my Father, that they will find comfort. Father, in this word is registered in the books of heaven. And Jesus is now sitting in the front seat watching over us. And he is encouraging me this morning, speak, Pastor, speak to my people. I depend on you to bring the message to them in the mighty name of Jesus and the people of God shall say amen. Can I hear a clap of all of your hands? Please come clap, 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 clap your hands. Ah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. You, I, I, I just want to acknowledge our mom, our visionary our senior pastor, our spiritual leader. And then I also want to acknowledge all the pastors, every uh, uh, leader, and also our bishops that is in the house. Now, let me tell you something. In a bishop in Afrikaans, in our language, means biscop. Now, if you do a direct translation, it means it's a bus yet. Bus is a bus and cop is a head now if they are the head of the bus it means they also host the driver and today my brothers and sisters our driver is our mom veronica and our bishops are hosting them they lift up our hands they are lifting her up they are lifting up pcci they are the front runners of this vision and we celebrate you bishops no Bus hits because you are the ones that keeping this ministry also together. You are, 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 are protecting our mom. You are protecting our, our, our spiritual leader. You host her. You lift her up. Ladies and gentlemen, come, let's just give a clap off for our bishops this morning for the wonderful work that they are doing. Come on, clap, clap, clap your hands, clap your hands, and thank you so much. Let me go into the word. This morning, we're going to teach, we're going to learn about a man called Naaman. Man called Naaman, if you can turn your Bibles to the book of Second King, chapter 5. It says, now Naaman, he was a commander of the army of the king of Syria. He was a great and honorable man. Ladies and gentlemen, it says he was a great man. It means that the king of Syria could depend on him. He was an honorable man. Today, my brothers and sisters, we ask ourselves, you don't ask our mom for Ronica, I don't have to ask Bishop Charles, are you honorable? I have to ask myself, are you great in the work of God? I ask myself, what did you do so far for God? So Naaman, the Bible say that he was also, he find greatness in the eyes of his master of his king it means the king depend on him the king can also say naaman tell me what are we going to do here 
how are we going to strategize against this army? And because why Naaman, he was a great and honorable man, the Lord also acknowledged him and gave him victories over very, very, very much countries. And then the Bible says he was a mighty man of valor. Hallelujah. It means he was a man was courageous. A man that the king can depend on. The army can depend on. He was a man that not sleeping while the enemy was, 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 was attacked. A man that not run away. Ladies and gentlemen, is a man that we can depend on. Question this morning. Can God depend on us? Can God call us also mighty men of valor? It is not this uh, uh, gospel. It's not for anybody. It's not for cowards. It's not for people that want easy religion. No, we have, must have courage to stand up against false doctrine. We must stand up against, we must have courage to stand up against false prophecies. We must stand up. You know what? I had a friend uh, years ago, uh, back, what I had a friend, and he was an atheist, and, and continued to speak to him, you know, the word of God. And you know what they, what they said? He said, you know what, Albertus? I have a very good relationship with God. My relationship with God is, God, you stay away from me, and I stay away from you. I say, thank you very much, Mr. Knight. Micah, from today on, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I will not encourage you anymore because why I am stood up for my Lord. If you feel you want to stay away from him, it is your business. You know what, Grace, uh, 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 cousin, that man, he, he can even swear you if you speak against the Lord. He can, he, can, he can assault you if you say anything bad about his religion. That is a man of courageous. There is a man of courage. There is a man that says, I'm standing up against false things. I'm standing up about, against anything that I protect my Lord and my master. And this morning, the question again, can God depend on us to protect? Sometimes, you know, we don't even want to play gospel when we are amongst other people because we are shy people. They're going to say, oh, you are born again. Can we protect? God and this gospel against anybody that is against it, like Naaman, honorable man. Let's go further. Now, this is the point. Naaman was an honorable man. He was a great man. He was a mighty man of valor. He was the one that the king can depend on. He was amongst the elite in the army of the king. He was very close to the king himself, but he was a leper. He was a leper. One thing that he falls short of was all these great things that the Bible were telling about. With all these accolades that they are explaining us, there was one thing, my dear brothers and sisters, one little thing that will cause his death. One little sin is going to cause your death. It doesn't matter how many commands are you obeying, but what can keep you from heaven is this one sin. The Bible said you must obey all the commands of God. One little sin from Naaman that caused him the greatness that he was. Now the Bible said that if we let's understand, I think Bishop Charles can also help me with the, the, the problem was leprosy. It was a sin, it was a it was a disease that there was no cure. And also Satan let the people believe, and also those people they let the people believe that leprosy is a kind of uh, a curse. Leprosy 
is starting with just sores and itching and things. But why, as it progress, as it progress, the one night you're going to sleep, the next morning your fingers is lying next to you. Your, your limbs start falling off. You start rotten from the outside and from the inside. And then it comes to a stage that they're going to put you out of the city. The thing about leprosy, when you are so far advanced, then you have to cover your face and cover the body. And when you walk in the streets, you have to shout, unclean, unclean, I'm unclean. And as this progress, as the more is the sin, and you are rottening and rotting in this sin, it comes to a point where they are putting you out of the city, they are putting you out of the church, they are putting you out of your community, they are putting you out of your house. They say you must go to a place where they say it is the region of the death. Now you are just waiting for the death. And you join all those lepers that is sitting there waiting for the death. You are not allowed to even come into your own house, into your own church, into your own temple. Brothers and sisters, this morning, sometimes by pride, we are putting people out of the church. We are putting people out of their religion, out of their belief, of their faith, because they are seeing we are walking with pride and they say, this is not what Jesus stands for. One day I was in service a couple of uh, years back, there was a drunk guy comes into the church. And you know like drunk people is that they now want to be born again and things like that. And he go and he stand right in front of the pulpit. And he starts just praying on himself. And you know what the pastor said? Take this man away about me because I, I will slap him. Take him away. I walk up to the guy and I put my hands on him. And as I start praying with him, and as I was start praying with him, also I said to myself, about, oh, how can we do something from the pulpit? How can we have so much pride that we cannot engage with the drunk? How can we uh, have so proud that we cannot engage with the prostitutes, the people in the person and things? How can we have so much pride that we want to be with the people that does not even need God? My brothers and sisters, this morning, this message is not something that is been sitting in the Bible. It is something that I want to drop in your spirit. It's not going to speak to your intellectual. It's going to speak to your spirit. Pride. Let's go get to the message. Now, when Naaman comes to a point where this leprosy was now in advance, the Bible say, then, and the Syrians had gone out on raid and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. This servant, this mate, everybody was worried about Naaman. He was a great man. He was a man of God. They don't want to lose him. They don't they say, oh, what can we do for Naaman? How can we keep this man? Because sooner or later, he's going to get out of this. He must get out of the army, out of the palace. He have to, we have to put him out. So what can we do? So they brought this maid. And, they, and this maid was saying, just to cut everything a little bit. So she's saying, she's saying, then she said to her mistress, if only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him from his leprosy. Brothers and sisters, listen to this word. When Naaman hear about there is help, when Naaman hear that there is help in Israel, in Samaria, Israel, he go to the king and he say, King, I want to take some leave. I'm running the scriptures a little bit for He said, I want to take some leave because I hear there is help in Israel. 
The king even gave him a letter to say, listen, take this letter to the king of Israel. And you give this letter to him. And he say, it's coming from the king of Syria. And I want him to treat you, to heal you and things. And also take all this money, this silver and things as a gift. Did this girl said that he must go to the king? Or there is a prophet? Sometimes we feel that we want to be sit in those big mega churches and things about because why then I look great, then I feel great, I'm amongst the greats. Naaman said, I must go. The, the girl said, he must go to the prophet. Naaman decided, no, he want to go to the king. Because why? I am of royal. I'm sitting always in royal. Ladies and gentlemen, is that not so even today? I don't want to go into the squatter camp to preach the word of God. I don't want to go to the people that staying in shacks. No. Sometimes people say, oh, this church is too little. I, 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 look at this little. I don't belong about these little people. This little church, I want to be against the big knots like the TD Jakes. I want to be among all those guys, big guys. Or what? It's pride. It's pride. It's the disease of pride that is sitting in you that say that this is too little for me. This is too small for me. So name and go to the king of Israel. And then the king of Israel Remember now he's going to this king. He look at the letter and the gift. He said, oh, 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 now I understand. The king of Syria want to make war against me. Because he knows I cannot cure leprosy. He knows that I don't have anything to cure. Now, 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 now he is picking a fight with me. You want to fight with me? Ladies and gentlemen, is it not so? Sometimes we are running, we think that, you know what, if I can just be among these people, if I can just be with them and things and whatnot, I will be so great and excellent. No, no, no. Bible said, my brothers and sisters, come as Jesus said, you know what, I, um, I am not from the from from the temple i am not from those uh, the, actually the people of 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 israel thought that this messiah is coming as a king is going to uh, 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 release them from this uh, poverty and slavery and all these things he's coming as a king but jesus said no i'm coming to the sick and the dead and i'm coming to those to the poor the poverty so now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go forward. And then the king of Syria said, go now and I will send you a letter to the king of Israel. Okay, we've been there. Ladies and gentlemen, and now we come to a point where Naaman is now at the king of Israel and still they cannot be healed so they said no but the girl said that there's a prophet not a king so naaman turned around his uh, uh, chariot and then he said okay let's go to this prophet but when he come closer to the prophet's place now he is no longer driving smooth or riding smooth now he's getting a road and then on the road there is a sign that say the house of elijah and he look at the sign and he look at the place and said no what the hell am i doing here what do they think about me i am naaman i am the 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 the, the captain in the Syrian army i am of royal i am sitting with the king and now they're sending me to this squat again. I must go into this road. The Bible said that the road was so narrow that his bodyguards had to get out and run next to him. So never was the road. My brothers and sisters, the road to heaven is also narrow. The road to salvation, the road to righteousness. There is no error. There's no room for error. There is no room that you can do what you want. The Bible said that you even God wink at you. Now with this pride in him, he said that even this road is not worth it. 
with this pride that he has for me. He said that, how can I go to this house? But his servants say, Master, if you want to be healed, you had to go to the prophet. Now, as you were driving in this narrow road and this bumpy road, or what, all of a sudden, the servant of Eliza come to him. Oh, it made Naaman so angry. He said, what does this man think of me? He is sending a servant instead of coming himself. He thinks nothing of me. The servant said, the prophet said, you must go to the river Jordan. And there you must go seven times under the water and you will be healed. He said, what nonsense is this? Why should I go to the river Jordan? In my country, in Syria, there is clean water. There's the river of Papa. And there is another river of Ephraim. It is clean, clear water. What should I do in the river of Jordan? Let me tell about the river of Jordan. When it is in the raining season, oh, it is good and great waters. But when it's not raining, it's muddy, it's stinking. There is insects that sit in the water. Oh, the water. There is serpents that is driving on the water. You, the water is bad, bad, bad. And now the prophet sent him to go into that water. Naaman turned around there and he said, I'm leaving. Nobody will humiliate me like that. Fellow brothers and sisters, sometimes we are so close, close, close to our breakthrough. We are so close, our close to our greatness. But because of pride or because of our self-righteousness, we turn around and we say to ourselves, this is not good enough for me. This is not good. You know, one day a brother tell me, I said, why are you not coming to the church anymore? He said, you know what? Pastor, from now on, I'm sitting in my lounge and I'm watching the church on TV. Because why? You know what? I, I, I want to be among the great and I want to be... An, I said, but even the people that is sitting there on TV, the church on TV, they are also in the church. So you are watching people that is, I said, and the church, those people on that church, in that church, the blessing is for them. Yes, you can get, but you will not get the same blessing. My brothers and sisters, because that our pride that we have, this disease of pride, we are turning around from things that God meant for us. And as Naaman turned around, he said, I'm not going through this. My brothers and sisters, they ran after him. They said, Master, you still have leprosy. You're still going to die. If you turn around now, if you give up now, surely, surely, surely you're going to die. Brothers and sisters, if we this morning giving up on God now, if we turn our backs now on him, if we join the world and say that, you know what, I don't find anything. I've been praying every day. Oh, I've been fasting. Oh, I've been doing everything. But I still don't have a car. I don't still have a house. I still don't. I am giving up. Look at that man. Uh, that he's running a Sabine. He's running a legal business. And look how the beautiful house, that smart cars is there driving. I'm turning around now. Or maybe sometimes we say that, uh, uh, this faith does not work for me. Let me go to those guys that give you holy water and holy bands and holy shoes and, 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 and all this. Things, and then maybe I can be also great. Let's come back to the story. Naaman decided, okay, I'm going to turn around. I'm going to give this try. And when he get to the river Jordan, the water was stinking. The insects was flying over. The water was muddy. And he said, me, man, the captain in the army of Syria, the elite that sitting on the table of the king, I have to go into this dirty water. Brothers and sisters, this story is about Naaman. But I want you to connect with your own story. Connect with your own issues. And find in your heart, in your space, in your memory, when was I also living with pride? When in my life I was also ruled by proud, by pride? Naaman get out of his chariot. First he put one. Now he don't have a choice. He just have to. And also he have his fellow servants and things that encourage us. 
Thank God for people today that encourage us. Thank God for Bishop Charles Alexander. Thank God for Mom Veronica. Thank God for Bishop Alexander. Thank God for each and everyone that is listening on the sound of my voice that is encourage us. Go. Don't turn around. Come, let us fast. Come, let us pray. Thank God for people. If it wasn't for them, where would it be? Where will we be? We be? Naaman put one foot in the stinky water and then he put the other foot in the stinky water. And then he said to himself, should I really go through this? Eventually, he's getting halfway in and his followers is telling him, Master, you need to go all the way down. The prophet said that you must go under the water. Brothers and sisters, when we want the greatness of the Lord, if we want to get rid of the pride of this sickness that we have, we have to go down on our knees. We have to go all the way into our spiritual life. We have to go all the way in the in, 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 in worshiping God. We have to cut out all the things that is not meant for us. If we want God and God alone in our life, we need to go down. We need to go under. He goes under the water. He comes out. Actually, we close his nose. He goes down. He comes out. Nothing happened. He said, I'm giving up. They say, Master, the prophet says seven times. Naaman said, let me give it another chance. He goes down. He feels so humiliated. Sometimes when we are going, you know, I used to, this is where I started my ministry. This is where I'm coming from. And Bishop Charles know me. Oh, he knows me that I don't care where I go. I don't care why. When I, God sent me, I'll go. I went into Tempisa. I went into Vusimus. I went into Ivory Park. I don't care whether they can scratch my car, hit my cars and things. One day I was with dead in the car. It was about 7 o'clock at evening. All oh, the cars were so piled up, taxis and things. And now all of a sudden they're losing patience. They're trying to just push you out of the road or push in front of you. And my father sat next to me. He said, just take it easy, just we don't have a way out here, but just take it calm, because now I also want to take shortcuts. And this is one thing that I learned from my late father, Godfrey. He does not care. He's sitting in behind of a bus. He's going into the shack. He's, there is where he feels so comfortable and he feels so great. When he is among the poor, among the needy and things, oh, this is what makes him feel so great. Can I hear a clap of all of your hands? Come, just clap, 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 clap for our father. Just clap for him, for the things that he's learned for us, the things that he's stores in us. Oh, he give us this thing about humility. Something that you can never ever lose. Something you don't learn on varsity. So brothers and sisters, Naaman go down for the third time. And then when he go out inside, he remind him about this stinky water, this muddy water. He remind him about the serpents that he saw when the water started stirring, the sticks were just crawling away. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, when we are also in that situation where we say that, hey, God is not coming through for us. Why do I'm finding myself in? My finance is not working out. My children giving me trouble. I have problem in my family. I have problem in my, I have problem in my world, in, in my work. Then the devil remind us about all those things when you are destined for your greatness. When your breakthrough is right in front of you seven times, not three, seven times you need to fast. Seven times you need to pray. Seven times you need to worship God. Seven times you need to speak about the greatness of God. Seven times you need to do the work of God without stopping, without reversing, without you have to Go seven times. Don't think on the third time that eyes, ah, this is not working for me. He comes up. He takes his breath. 
He look around of him. He see how the people are his followers. Uh, what does they now think about me? I am the captain in the house of Syria, in the king. What are they thinking about me? Ladies and gentlemen, is that not so? When you are going to that little church, or you're going to that small house, or that, what are they thinking about me? Huh? How can I go? I am too big for this. I'm too big. I this thing not even coming to you to say that. What are the people going to say when I start preaching in the malls? Oh, that is one thing that I can tell you about my father, and I'm so sorry if I can quickly bring it back. My pastor Godfrey, whenever we go into the shop, he speak to the attendants, he speak to the people that is sitting behind that turn, and he is now talking about, he invite them to church, he invite them, he take the numbers, he take them. My brothers and sisters, what are we saying? What are these people thinking about me? I'm looking for members or I'm looking for either. What are they thinking about me? No, my brothers and sisters, it's pride. It's pride that makes you not go to the person that is there on the street that is drunk and is throwing his life away. It is pride that not stop your car among that person that the beggar or the homeless people. It is pride that you're not going and speak to the needy what are the people going to think about me me naaman me albertus the quality assurance manager i now need to speak to this person it's proud the first time naaman comes up the people encourage him seven times seven times you need to go down not one time the Lord said when you must forgive each seven times 77. He make it so difficult for you to not forgive. He says seven times seven. Now when are you coming to seven times 17? When are you going to count and give up? Jesus make it so difficult that you say now I give up. Seven times. And when he go down and he comes in all of a sudden the inching is going away. Praise the Lord. And all of a sudden, he feels his flesh is coming back to him. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, he feels about the hey, I, hey, look at this. My fingers is healed. And when he comes up and he's so, I'm hallelujah. Healing is on his way. My breakthrough is on his way. Jesus is answering. And he comes up the six times, he's going down, and this time he go with courage. The courageous Naaman that he is, the mighty man of valor that he is. Oh, now he is not thinking about the stinking water. He's not thinking about the rotten water. He's going down because why he sees that Jesus is God, is answering. He sees that my breakthrough is that, ladies and gentlemen, if you remain in the spirit, if you remain with God, you will find out that no, if, no these things in the world doesn't matter. You will feel the breakthrough. You will feel the things how this of the God is coming through for you. All of a sudden, you have only five dollars or five pounds in your pocket, but you can buy bread, you can buy milk, you can buy this. But all oh, when I have this thousands and thousands and thousands, I could not make rent. I could not make this about them. But because you are now believe of God, you now depend on your God for your healing. Hallelujah. Can I hear another clap off of your hand? Come clap, 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 clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is God not speaking to this directly to us this morning? If this word is not moving you, nothing else in your life will move you. You will be stagnant. You will be dormant. The God's word will never, ever, ever reach out to you. The Bible said in the book of... Uh, I said that because you reject the truth and you believe the lie, the Bible said, therefore, I will send you a powerful dilution. I will close your eyes without valley I will make you blind so that you continue to believe that lie because you reject the truth. He said, but one day, not your prayers is going to help you. Oh, even if you go on your knees, I will not listen to you. I said, oh, whatever you're doing, I will not even care for you. Your prayers are not going to save you. Six times Naaman comes up. They say, master, and last time, 
Ladies and gentlemen, and last time, come let's say, say Jesus, else is not my last time. I am going down. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to praise you. Oh, I'm going to uh, speak to the blind, uh, to the to the needy. I'm going to do it. And so another chance, the last time. And when he goes down, my brothers and sisters, when he comes up, he's healed. He's healed of leprosy. He's healed of his pride. He's healed of this disease. Actually, actually, he did not even have leprosy. His disease was pride. Spiritually pride. He could not engage with the poor, the needy, because he was sitting next to the thing. And today, my brothers and sisters, we also need to be very careful and pay attention to this disease that make us not reach out to what God wants us to reach. We need to be careful that we are not missing what God want us to do honorable men god want us to be great god want us to be honorable you mighty men of valor god want to depend on us god is not going to send angels with white wings from heaven to come and convert the people no 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 he said that i put men on the earth to look after the animals, to look after the sea, to look after the food, and also to look after my people. Today, my brothers and sisters, we have a task. We have an assignment. We, 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 we have something that we must do for Jesus, that we must do for God. No matter what is your circumstances, it doesn't matter your shortfallings and sin. It doesn't matter who you are, where you find yourself and things, but God wants today use you and he wants to cure you with pride. You know what? When the blind man comes to Jesus and things, about the people, his brothers and things bring him, they say, is that maybe the sin from his fathers and his mothers, a generation and curse that is blind? Jesus said, what can I do for you? I don't want to hear the curses. I don't need to hear where you get blind. I don't need to hear what makes you blind and things. I ask you, what can I do for you this morning? We must ask God, what can I do for you this morning? What can I do for you? Not what you can do for me, but what I can do for you. But when we ask God this thing, we must ask it without pride, without conditions. We must not ask it that, Lord, you know what, let me tell you this, uh, uh, Bishop Charles will uh, 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 agree with me, we've been in the ministry before a long time, and uh, then one day we had a leadership meeting, and you know what the bishop said, he said, you know, I want you guys to do testimony in those rich areas, in those well areas, we need to go and bring those people in the church so that the church can grow finance so that we can be great oh the devil is a liar you mean i must walk past the person that is in need i must walk past the homeless and go to that rich people just because why the church need to grow financially the devil is a liar it's only a devil that can say something like that brothers and sister pride is going to stop us from reaching out those who need God, those who God, is, you know, listen to this one. Hannah just wanted a son, but God wanted a prophet. We don't know that lady that is there on the street that doesn't know Jesus. The man that is there on the street, he doesn't know Jesus. We don't know that Jesus wants you to go and bring him to the Lord. And he is the one that is going to be the pastor, the leader, the bishop of tomorrow. You don't know that. But if you walk past that person, immediately you kill another pastor. Immediately you kill another great man of God because of pride. You think it could only be that great man with the smart cars and the smart houses. No, 
Pride is going to stop you from reaching the person that God wants you to reach. I hope when I pray this message, we're kind to you. It speaks your spirit. I hope this message reminds us, and I pray this morning that the story of Naaman speak to us. The story of Naaman, maybe you don't have pride, but maybe the friend next to you, maybe the person over the street, maybe somebody a colleague at your work, maybe you should encourage him also. You should encourage him and say, listen, uh, uh, you need to leave that thing. You need to live. If you want to go where God wants you to go, if you want to, like Naaman, go on to the bumpy road, the narrow road, if you want to go to the heights of Elijah, where there is no paved road, where, ladies and gentlemen, you need to lose the thing that they call pride. You need to get rid of that disease. If you want to reach out to that person, then you need to lose that pride. Because Jesus comes not only for the rich, but he comes for each and everyone that needs salvation. Each and everyone that say that, I want to be like you. I want to be like Jesus. I want to be, I want to occupy heaven. I want to go into heaven. Jesus and salvation is there for you. Thank you very much, my brothers and sisters. Thank you very much that you were giving me this opportunity. Thank you that I can speak in humbleness. Thank you that I can sit in the car and I can bring this message. It does not matter where are you or what auditorium you are. This message is meant for you. Naaman was going to the king. He was waiting for a doctor or a surgeon or a specialist to heal him. He was waiting for a cure. Never know that he knew that a maid, a slave, can bring for him salvation. Thank you very much. God bless you. Amen. Come, let's just do a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you can use my mouth and my heart and my mind to speak good to your people. Thank you, my Lord, that I can speak without pride, that I can speak with humility. Thank you, Lord, that I can be a vessel. Use me this morning. Use me every day. Father, use me to reach out to those who does not get the word. Father, I thank you for each and every one that listened to this word. I thank you that today another new Naaman was born, a new spirit was born, a new cleanliness, righteousness was born in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I declare that your word finds entrance in the heart of your people. I declare, my Father, that this word will bring healing, my God. This word will bring understanding. This word, my Father, will bring Edifying greatness. I pray this morning, my Father, that we, as we are taking your word, you will send your angels ahead of us so that we can speak good to your people. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Come on. Clap, 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 cl